So today we'll make clay diaz because Diwali is fast approaching and crafters usually take any excuse they can get to create stuff. So if you're anything like me, hit the subscribe button, give this video a like and let's make a dia together. Let's take a look what we need for our clay dias. First of all, of course, we need some kind of clay. This is air dry clay. It's called Das Mess and it's pretty popular here, but you can use any kind of clay. If you have leftovers, keep them in a plastic Ziploc bag or in original bag that you shut really tightly. It's also a good idea to wet the clay before you put it in so that the surface won't dry off. You can also use terracotta colored clay or paper clay, cement clay, toilet paper clay and you've got a lot of recipes on YouTube and elsewhere on the whole wide web. Then you'll need some small little dish for the water because it's much easier to work and to smooth out the surface with the water. I like this container my kiddo made it in school and it's great because it's heavy and it doesn't tip over. To wash your hands and surface it's good to have a sponge and to decorate the clay I used this marker cap and a toothpick and also a kitchen knife comes handy. And the surface to work on. I like to work on wooden boards and I have this old board has had better times and now I keep it just for work with clay. No matter which clay we use we need to knead it first. If you have small hands like me take a small chunk and knead it thoroughly and then add to it until you have the desired amount. You can add water as needed. Once your clay is kneaded roll it into a bowl, smooth out the surface with water if you work with water-based clay of course. Most commercial clays are water-based except for the polymer clay of course. Now let's make a pinch pot. It's called a pinch pot because we make it by pinching the clay. Make a nice smooth ball and then push lightly into the clay with your thumb until you make a nice well. Then you thin out the walls from both sides, thumb on one side and other fingers on the other. Keep pinching and turning your ball all the time so that the walls will be equally thick as much as possible. That will keep the ball from cracking when drying and from breaking when it's already dry. Work slowly and patiently. This is a very easy and forgiving technique but you have to be gentle and sensitive so you don't make any part too thin. Once the walls are desired thickness, make a little sprout and smooth the rim and the whole surface with water. Take some time here. The smoother you make it now, the less you will have to correct it later. It is a quite a meditative process anyway. And it doesn't take that long. I checked it on the camera and I made this first dia in less than 5 minutes. Every clay is different and some will need more time or have other limitations. If you use salt dough for example to make your dias from, it will be much softer and you will need to make the walls of your dia thicker. When I put it into the final destination to dry, I like to give it a final pass to correct any misshapes that happened at the transfer. If you work with real clay, this might not be necessary since it's a bit sturdier, but this air dry clay gets saggy really quick. For the next bowl I do the same. Knead the dough, roll it into a bowl and continue with pinching. If you play guitar and have long nails on one hand but not on the other, it's easier to pinch with short nailed fingers. If you have long nails on both hands and still working with clay, I applaud you. I know people do it and I'm always amazed how they can do that. Donna Kato had really long nails a while ago and she made amazing things. She manages not to touch the clay with the tip of the fingers somehow. But I'm not used to long nails and I only have the ones I really need for guitar so that's my way around. I made my second dia a bit shallower and thicker because I wanted to decorate the edge with texture and the rim should hold the force of pushing something into it. My kids landed me this marker and I pushed the cap into the clay. The cap leaves a very cute texture. You can play around with different things you find around the house like pens, sticks, screws, shells and so on. Test them on a scrap piece of clay to see which impressions you like and then use your favorite on the rim of your dia. We'll accent the texture with paint later on. 
It would be better if I smoothed out everything first, transfer the clay to the drying spot and then do the texture because I demolished it a bit and had to repair it. For the third dia I made another pinch pot that you already know how to do and then decided to decorate the rim with some clay balls. For that I first rolled a snake of clay and cut it into more or less equal pieces so that my balls will be roughly the same size. Then I rolled the balls and adjusted them around the edges of the ball. The clay stick together if both sides are wet. It's even better if you make a slur, but for this small little project it is not necessary. Now we have to let them dry at least overnight or however long it takes for your clay in your climate. Now to decorate the dias you'll need some kind of acrylic paint. This one is shiny, it says luck here, but you could also use matte color. And if you want to make your pots shiny afterwards you can use glossy varnish and in any case it's a good idea to use some kind of varnish. You can also use varnish for wooden floor and that works as well. If you intend to paint your mandalas the whole surface you'll have to have some paint brushes and to paint flat surfaces these are great. Either flat or angled brushes are great for that, but the round ones can be used as well. And the last things are these dotting tools. They are definitely not necessary. You can also use a stick or a toothpick and that works as well. So you don't need the real dotting tools, but these are nice if you have them at home. Use them and try. You will see there are different sizes and you can choose how big you want your dots to be if you're painting a mandala. And if not then these brushes will do. And another thing that is nice to have is some little recycled plastic tray. This one is from a light switch but you could use anything that would go into the garbage like yogurt cup or the lid of some kind. Anything just to mix the paint on and you will be able to just throw it away. So it's a good idea because you don't, then you don't have to wash the pellets, you don't use so much water and the acrylics is not going down the drain and these things would go into trash anyway so it doesn't matter. Before you actually start painting your dias it would be a good idea to sand them a bit to smooth the surface. You could also put one coat of white paint first. When you're sanding it what can happen is that some parts will fall off. It's no big deal, you can glue them back on later with PVA glue. It's better that this happens now than later on because it's much easier to correct now when it's not painted yet. Just apply a tiny drop of PVA glue to the pot and to the bowl and press together. Once the glue is dry you can start painting it. I painted the pot with the balls just solid bright red and let it dry so I can paint the balls in gold later on. In the meanwhile I painted my mandala on the biggest dia. I first tested my dotting tools and paintbrush handles and sticks on scrap piece of paper to see how big dots they make and to get me into the process. After all the test dotting my hands were warmed up and I could tackle the real thing. I put the biggest dot in lemon yellow in the middle of the dia and then painted smaller dots in rainbow order around it. First the sunshine yellow, then I mixed some orange, next bright red, rubin red, violets and blues. When I was painting with red I corrected some areas that I couldn't reach with my big brush on the first red idea. Then I returned to my dots and once I reached the edge of the rim I stopped. You could go on and put the dots on the outside as well if you'd like. I chose to keep my outside white for some contrast though. Now I finished the red dia with some gold paint on the balls. It's really essential to stir the metallic paint before you use it so don't skip that step. The last dia I just painted turquoise and once the first layer was dry I added another layer of dark blue that I wiped off when the paint was still wet so that the texture in crevices showed even more. All three dias took me about an hour and a half with cleaning time. If you like this video give it a like and if you make any ideas I'd love to see them so tag me at Very Arty Fairy or comment on my blog so I can check them out. I wish you a wonderful celebration if you celebrate Diwali and if not I hope it, this brightened your day a bit. Have fun and see you next Friday. Bye bye!